Hi, boys and girls. Let's go over our words for this week. This week we're working with our initial sounds, words that blend, words that go together. So we have Q and U, and it makes a qu sound. Quick, quirk, quack, qu, Q, U. Quick, quirk, quack. We also have S, Q, U. And we have squash, square, squeak. Then we have think, theft, thorn. And then we have th with the R on it, through, thrash, threat. Let's listen again. Quick, quirk, quack, squash, square, squeak, think, theft, thorn, through, thrash, threat. Now, let's review our vocabulary words. Remember, a biography is a true story of someone's life. Emancipate means to set some, something free. Jealousy, that feeling you have when you want what somebody else has. Conflict is like an argument. And then we have the word determined. That's our new word, determined. When you are determined to do something, you have your mind made up. And even though you may have to work very hard, you are going to do it no matter what. You are determined. All right. Today, we're going to continue with our biography on Abraham Lincoln by Augusta Stevenson. And this chapter is called Sarah and Abe Go Fishing. Mother, asked Abe, do you need any more wood? No, Abe, said Mrs. Lincoln. You have brought all I need today. Do you need any more water? Mrs. Lincoln looked at the water buckets. Why, they are full, she said. You must have worked pretty fast, Abe. I'd like to go fishing, Mother. Now, I can make an inference here. Abe brought in all the wood, he filled all the water buckets, and he wants to go fishing. I don't think he can go fishing until all of his chores are done, so he's working very hard to get them done. You have earned it, my dear boy. You may go and stay all afternoon. I want to go too, said Sarah. No, said Mother, you aren't old enough. I'm older than Abe, said Sarah. I'm two years older. But Abe is larger and stronger, and he knows how to take care of himself. I'll take care of her, said Abe. I won't let her go near the deep water. Very well then, go along children. The children ran all the way to the creek. They had no fishing poles or lines or hooks, but they knew just what to do. They found a place where the creek was shallow. They stooped over and held their hands in the water. Don't let them slip through your hands, said Abe. Fish are slippery. They waited and waited and waited. Their arms ached and their necks and backs ached, but still they stooped and waited. Let's go home, Sarah said at last. Not yet, said Abe. You can play on the bank, Sarah. And Abe went on fishing. Sarah found some acorns under a great oak tree. So for a long time, she was busy. She made acorn cups and saucers. She made an acorn sugar bowl and cream pitcher. She made acorn bowls for berries and mush. Then she played like she was drinking sassafras tea from the cups. She used play cream and play sugar. She ate a bowl of play mush and a bowl of play berries. Now she was tired of playing. Abe, she called, let's go home. Not yet, said Abe, wait. And Abe went on fishing. Sarah looked about for something else to do. Her keen eyes found some wild grapes high on a large vine. The vine grew close by a giant tree and it had fastened itself around it. It was almost as strong as the tree and almost as large around as Abe's arm. So up that vine went Sarah, just like a little squirrel. Then she sat on the crook of the vine and ate grapes until she couldn't eat another one. Come on, Abe, she called at last, let's go home. Not yet, said Abe, wait, and Abe went on fishing. Sarah swung herself to the ground. Nearby was a mother robin feeding a young robin. Sarah thought it would be fun to count the worms it ate. So she sat on a log, leaned against a tree, and began to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sarah's dark eyes closed. Sarah's brown head nodded. Sarah was asleep. 
and Abe went on fishing. Sarah didn't know she went to sleep. She didn't know how long she slept, but she did know someone was shaking her. She opened her eyes and there was Abe by her side. Look, he said, I've caught a fish. It isn't very large, said Sarah. And here's a picture of them fishing. No, but it's a fish, said Abe, and that's what I was fishing for. You were a long time, said Sarah. I don't care. I caught it, said Abe. Now we'll go home. It seems Abe was very determined to catch that fish. The children meet a soldier. Then Sarah and Abe started home. They went through the woods between the great, great trees. As they walked along the narrow path, they talked and talked and talked. They weren't talking about bears or wildcats or snakes. No, indeed. They didn't even think of bears and they didn't think of wildcats or snakes. They talked about Abe's fish. It was his first fish and he had caught it with his hands. He was proud of that and he had a right to be proud. Sarah had tried to catch a fish with her hands. She knew how hard it was. Isn't your back tired, Abe, she asked. You had to lean over the water so long. Yes, said Abe, but I don't care. I was determined to catch a fish. Mother will be glad to have it. She will fry it for our supper. Just then they heard a voice. Someone called, wait, children. The children turned. A strange man was coming toward them. He was smiling and waving his hand. I want to talk with you, he called. I have been alone in this forest all day and I'm lonesome. Abe's gray eyes opened wide. The man wore a blue coat with brass buttons. Abe's cap came off quickly. Oh, he said, you are a soldier. Yes, said the man, I'm a soldier. I've been out fighting Indians. Indians, gasped Sarah. Do you think they will come to our cabin? You needn't be afraid, said the man. They are far away from here. Can't I get you a drink of clear, cold water, asked Abe. Thank you, but I found a spring on the hill and I drank enough for a week. Then the soldier laughed and Abe and Sarah laughed too. Can't I get you something to eat, asked Abe next. I wish you could, said the soldier, I'm hungry. Can't you come with us to supper, Sarah asked. Mother would be very glad to have you. So would father, said Abe. His father was a soldier too. Thank you both, but I must go on. I'll try to get some supper where I camp for the night. I'll find some grapes or berries. Take my fish, sir. You could cook it for your supper. No, no, my boy. Why, that's the only fish you have. Please take it, sir. I want to do something for you. Why, the man asked. Because you are a soldier, Abe said. Bless your kind heart, the man said. Yes, I'll take your fish and I'll fry it for my supper. And thanks to you, little boy, many thanks. I want to be kind to all soldiers, said Abe. I hope you always will be, said the man, always as long as you live. All right, so Mrs. Lincoln didn't want Sarah to go. She tried saying Sarah wasn't old enough, which that argument didn't really hold water since Sarah's older than Abe. Um, Sarah was impatient while fishing, but Abe was very, very determined. He was gonna catch a fish no matter what, and he finally did, but then, well, he should have been proud taking his fish home to show his mom and dad. Instead, he has such a kind heart and he gave it to a soldier for dinner. That was a very selfless thing to do. And again, we see the importance he places on being kind to soldiers. And remember, that's important because this isn't a story about just any little boy. It's a story about a little boy that grows up to be president. Thanks for listening.